Let's get to our floor show traders. Tom, have investors' fears finally subsided, or are we in for choppy trading, I guess, depending on day-to-day -day headlines? Well, Liz, as you know, in the short term, the market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine based on fundamentals. Right now, we're in the thick of the short term voting machine and the emotional uh, headlines from the different drugs. You know, you've got Gilead has a drug, so we're up today. People are positive. Anecdotally, people are being cured by this drug, uh, one or two cases. AbV has the HIV drug, where we saw over the weekend a couple people had good results with that. So that's the short term up and down. The long term is, believe it or not, last week, 2020 earnings estimates actually went up 10 cents from 177.41 to 177.51. So there's still a strong bid under this economy. People are feeling confident. I, today, it's showing that this thing is going to get contained. It's going to get worked out, whether that's a week, four weeks, eight weeks, uh, the underlying economy. And then the back half of the year, you could have Boeing step in, get that plane back online, add $6 to earnings, and then we have, go from 9% growth to 12% growth. Tom, thanks very much. I want to get to Luke. Uh, you got a, a real slam on ExxonMobil, uh, and that's probably keeping a cap on what we would have seen bigger gains, at least with the Dow Jones Industrials. But we do have ExxonMobil at the very bottom of the Dow 30, down about a buck 68 to $60.44. Um, you know, we've, you and I have talked about whether, uh, you know, oil might be the new coal. But uh, more importantly, what happens here with names like that and Chevron? Well, I think they're going to get pounded, Liz. I mean, <clears throat> I say it every time. You and I have talked about it. We think there's a lot of oil in the world, right? And the other problem is that when OPEC talks about production cuts, it doesn't have the same effect anymore as it used to because the U.S. can pick up the supply and there's a lot of cheating. As, as the price of oil goes down, the producers actually have to produce more to get that same dollar amount to meet their budget. So yeah. I don't think a production cut is going to work. And also these stocks are just going to have to come down. The value okay. of the reserves are going to come down with the way they're priced. You had oil below $50 a barrel earlier in this session, Phil Flynn. Oil is now in a bear market. And just to give the definition of that, that's 20% off the recent highs. But putting that one commodity aside, we're looking at everything in this market. And the ISM manufacturing number, first expansion in six months, this is a bang-up number. Um, you know, it's a real advantage now, at least, to see this. Is it one-off or a trend now? Have we turned around in manufacturing? And what do the stocks there uh, look like? I think it's turned around. In fact, you know, we've been waiting for this turnaround for the last couple of months. And, and really, if you look at, you know, the oil demand drop and, and all the things we've worried about, the coronavirus, uh, you know, look at all the steps that have been taken in the last 24 hours to counteract that, right? We've got a strong manufacturing number here in the U.S. China's taking a hit right now, but they added billions of dollars of stimulus overnight. They cut their interest rates in China. And even though things are terrible now, on the back end, when that starts to hit in, that's going to be an incredible demand boost. So really, everybody has taken the steps around the globe, yeah. you know, to get ahead of this virus. And because of that, I, I think we're in a new trend. And, you know, once we get through this a couple days or a week, I think it's going to be a great buying opportunity. Gentlemen, uh, exactly. And that's what we're here for and what you're here for. And we so appreciate you giving some real granularity to all that's going on in this very broad market.